Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a sunny Lithgow morning. Uh, it is a beautiful day, winter day. Uh, we're just out in Clementine. Whoops. We're going to take her out for a bit of a drive. Armstrong steering, of course, in a 50 uh, four Rover. No mirrors either. <laughs> no reversing mirrors. So that's right. It's a big driveway. this back over to my speedo oh yeah and first gear and we're off nice wine in first gear with the old straight cut gearboxes in these girls. And off we go. Okay, my speedo seems to be working a bit better now. We'll see what happens. Um, I've been having trouble with this speedo and one of the suggestions was to release the cable at the back of the uh, at the back of the speedo itself where it screws in uh, and actually just back it off a little bit so it's not in too tight uh, and that appears to have assisted although I seem to have lost my trip yeah the trip's not moving oh well there's got to be more work to do fortunately it's not hard to get out now for those that you don't know this is a four-speed manual gearbox no synchro on first four-wheel unassisted drum brakes but believe me they are very large and quite powerful so I don't have a trouble stopping it uh, into first no synchro as I said straight cut first gear and a, a freewheel knob here now I haven't actually used my freewheel yet so what I'm planning today is just to drive to um, blast furnace park uh, which is the historic site of the old one of the first blast furnaces in New South Wales uh, it's a uh, it's a park now oh, we'll go and uh, and then once I'm there I've got my drone with me which I actually haven't used yet so I'm planning to um, get the drone out and do a bit of experimental photography with that uh, see what I can achieve <laughs> maybe not much we'll give it a go anyway school zones are finished because it's uh, 20 past 10 As I said, beautiful summer, uh, winter's day in Lithgow, crystal clear uh, and about 11 degrees. Now under the bonnet of this, there's a 2.6 litre straight six. Uh, it's an overhead inlet and side exhaust valve engine, although in English speak it's IOE, inlet over exhaust. Um, typical of the time, uh, it's quite a long stroke with a small bore, and that was done for the old pre-war pre RAC rating, where the car was um, taxed, yearly tax was calculated on the bore, not the stroke. So these engines tend to be long stroke, small bore, but what that gives them is an enormous amount of very, very low down torque. Um, you know, if you don't want to change gear, you can pretty well leave it. Uh, now, whilst it does have blinkers, they've been added later. This would have originally had trafficators popping out from the uh, 
from the columns, uh, B column post there. Uh, it no longer has trafficators that are working. One day we might try and get those to actually work. So it's got modern blinkers, but with trafficators, they never gave you warning lights. So I've got no warning lights in here. I can just hear the faintest tick from the trafficator. God, Lithgow traffic, I don't know. It's a lovely gearbox. Um, it's a very strange long linkage because it goes right under the dash and then um, drops straight down into the gearbox. So whilst it is a long linkage, it's direct in. So there's no remote levers to it um, and it works very well. Uh, my work, <laughs> the railway. I'm on holidays at the moment, so this is week four of five, uh, and it's currently the Tuesday of week four. So what are we, we're the 21th of May. We're just following the railway line down a little bit. Yeah, look, the speedo's working, but unfortunately my uh, trip meter isn't, which of course, actually, 133, I don't know whether the main, um, the main mileage recorder is working, I'll just see if that turns over. So we're just going up to Blast Furnace Park now. No, the... the Mileage isn't recording at all. Uh, oh well, not much I can do really. Oh, speed humps, boom, boom. And somebody feeding the sheep. Quite a few sheep. So, look at that. That's third gear and I'm pulling up a hill. Oh good, nice and quiet, that's what I wanted. So where will we park this girl? We'll park this girl over in the sun and you'll see Blast Furnace Park or what's the reins of the Blast Furnace and area. Right yo. So we're gonna stop that just here now. Um, and I'm going to then switch over and try and get some drone footage. So hopefully next time you see me, it's uh, with some drone footage. Anyway, see ya. To the start of my very bad drone footage, um, bear with me. Uh, the car is filthy, as you can see. I did quickly hose it, but as it was only about five degrees this morning, I didn't really feel like um, getting out with a bucket and uh, water and washing it. I will have to do that. So, as I said, bear with me. You're gonna see footage of the car first of all, and then I'll take it across and um, we'll go and have a look at uh, some of the ruins, which you can actually see uh, reflected in the side of the car. Anyway, enjoy it, and I'll get back to you in a minute.
Okay, we're now over at the base of the ruins. So I'm just going to see, get the drone flying. Oh, there she goes. That's actually the engine house there. Now I'm not gonna give you a running commentary on the whole lot. Um, it, it's really just a test for me to get used to flying it. And I'm, believe me, I'm not good at it. Um, anyway, have a look around. That's, <laughs> I got really game and got it up high and then I started to panic, so I brought it back down again. Um, and I wouldn't fly it any closer because I was worried about losing the damn thing. Anyway, um, have a look at that. You'll see what in a minute I'll turn it around and we'll have a look at the car from a distance. I don't remember what this part is. This is where I actually um, took off from and then landed it again, so you'll see it again at the end of it. But have a look through the windows. All this area was a complete and utter mess in the 80s when I used to live up here. It was all overgrown with weeds. Somewhere I actually have um, some footage, uh, some film, no, not film, photos of that. So there's the rover sitting over in the car park. And these are all the walkways they've now put in. Uh, so I, I thought of flying it across to the rover. And I, I should have, as it turned out, but I didn't. Um, because, again, I sort of panicked and thought, oh, what if it falls out? Or, you know, it had plenty of battery. I don't know what I was worried about. I'm going again on Thursday with my uh, glamorous assistant, John, uh, and we'll probably take the Humber out and do something similar. So hopefully I'll get a little bit more uh, more adventurous. Anyway, so as you'll see in a second, I turn it back round and bring it in to land where I picked it up. Uh, and that's the end of it. Anyway, thanks for watching. See ya.